Nine o'clock. Stop the social hour here. All right. I hereby call this meeting to order. I need approval for today's agenda. I make the motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Today's agenda is approved. Approval of minutes from the last meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The minutes of the last meeting are approved. New business. No Guess new not. Business? No new business. No new business. Oh my. Old business. No, this is too fast. <laughs> All right, no old business. Surely we have certification lists, though. So. Yes, we do. We do. In fact, we have five of them today for your approval. So the first one is our construction inspector position. It is an entry-level position in the engineering division of Public Works. Our written exam is weighted at 100%, and it is part of our AFSCME union. So minimum qualifications are a high school diploma and three years of experience in concrete construction inspection or related sub-professional engineering experience or graduation from a two-year engineering technology program and one year of sub-professional engineering experience. Work experience must include inspection of public facilities, public relations, or public information or we would also accept an equivalent combination of training and experience. And then next we have our certifications that need to be um, obtained within the first year of hire and maintained throughout duration of employment. That would be our Portland Cement Concrete certification, our Hot Mix Asphalt certification, and Aggregate certification. Then we do have our standard physical background check and residency requirements. So this position is must be primarily with foundations and concrete as opposed to electrical or wood or whatever. Correct. This is going to be concrete. Sure. Hi, Nicole Gleason, Public Works Director. So we have a building division um, and we have building inspectors that are specific to the construction trades. These inspectors are specifically to sewer, um, roadway, driveway approaches, sidewalks. Um, so they're in, they're in a different division. Yes. So we did have 26 applicants. 17 of those were qualified and invited to the exam. One did not show. Seven did score below 70%, leaving us with nine candidates passing the written. They were put, five of those candidates passed the background check. Three were already internal and previously passed our background check, and one did fail, leaving us with eight on the list to be certified. And our stats. Okay. Okay. So it's an entry-level position, but you had internal candidates. Correct. So an entry-level position has no position below it that would be in the same job class family. But we do have other candidates, so maybe our streets employees would be interested in the construction inspector oh, position. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So next is our public service cashier position. It's an entry-level position in the revenue division of finance, and the written exam was weighted at 100%, and it is part of our Ask Me Union. So... Minimum qualifications are two years of public contact experience involving handling of money and general record clerical and record keeping duties. And again, background check and residency requirements. So we had 69 applicants. Oh. 61 were qualified and invited to the exam. One withdrew. 29 did not schedule. Eight did not show and 20 scored below 70%. That left us with three candidates passing the written, two candidates passed the background check, one was internal, so they previously passed that background check, and three are on the list to be certified. Yes? Is it so hard that only three out of 69? <laughs> so this does look very concerning with the numbers. However, we heavily scrutinized this exam 
prior and after it was administered. In fact, last time this list was certified, I have to give kudos to the commission. One of you had asked if they could use a calculator. In the past, they were not able to. So this time when we looked at the exam, we looked at some of the questions that involved basic math and then our harder math questions. So we actually or separated this exam into two separate portions. The first portion was primarily multiple choice and had basic math questions. An example that was very, not an exact question, but very similar. If John paid a bill with, his bill was $28.02, he paid with a $20 bill and $10 bill, what would his change be? So for those types of questions, we actually did not provide a calculator for, but that exam also included questions on fraud protection and customer service. On the second portion of the test, where we did have a few more harder math questions, we did allow a calculator. So unfortunately, they do need to have that basic information for this position. Yeah. But I guess that first one, I mean, it's, it should be a fairly easy math question, but everybody has calculators or they have cash registers or whatever that mm -hmm. tell you your change. That is true. Um, however, if there's some, a question, sometimes I know people say, well, I gave you this amount, or are you sure this is yeah. correct? Maybe quick change artist. They would need to have that basic skill. Is there a portion of it that, or what part of it, was there a part that more people failed on than others? No, those that did fail the exam, there were a significant number of questions that they did miss. So are we not attracting the right candidate? We do look at the minimum qualifications and try and put through as many people as we can that do meet those um, qualifications. So we do test as many as possible, meeting those minimum qualifications. Because I guess it would look at looking at your qualifications. It would seem to be fairly broad and fairly, you know, you'd be fairly easy. But yes. Obviously when it comes down to it, it's not. So if that's something we can definitely reevaluate and take a look at in the future as well, the minimum qualifications, including the exam itself. And this is an entry level position. Correct? It is, yes. So, you know, you may have people who are applying for yeah. multiple jobs and this just so happens to be one of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm surprised at how many people um, didn't show for the exam. Uh, I mean, 29, <clears throat> so, you know, that's a plus eight, you know, that's, <laughs> Let's see, are you going to pass one the test? Thing, Let me get my one, calculator off. <laughs> especially for this position, um, what I do typically is in the job announcement, I will put down the date that the test will be administered, and then also on a supplemental question that they have to answer, I do put in there, do you understand you must show for this exam on such and such a date? And then once that test is set, the test date, I send out an email. Um, because of the number of candidates we had, I did create two separate testing sessions, so I did include an extra date on that. Um, so they have, they do schedule, and on top of that, I do, if they sign up for text messages, I send out a text message to them as well to check their email for the next step in the process. And then our system also sends automatic reminders to the candidates too that did register for the exam and signed up for a test date. Oh, I don't think that uh, you need to, you know, like, I guess we're trying to dumb it down or whatever. We don't need to. I mean, you need to have competent people. Yeah. You know, it is unique here. You know, it could be the applicants. Or perhaps in the listing, a qualification should maybe be a little more involved. But, again, so what? They right. did apply, and hopefully you will come up with some good candidates. Yes, and it's very, I think it's very indicative, indicative of the job market today as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then we have our stats. And I'm just surprised at how many people didn't show up for the exam, but it, it's considered a fail. I mean, if you don't show, you're, you fail. You yeah. are correct. So, I mean, if you look at the specifics here, yeah, there's a fair amount that scored below 70%, but the vast majority of people didn't schedule an exam or um, didn't uh, show for the test at all. Yes. And that's a fail. Yep. You're out. 
Okay, next is our street equipment operator position. It is a promotional position in the street division of Public Works, and the practical was weighted at 100%, and it is part of our Teamster Union. So minimum qualifications are a high school diploma or GED equivalent, one year of experience driving trucks, tractors, or other service vehicles, or an equivalent combination of training and experience, they have to have a Class B CDL with air brake endorsement and then obtain their tanker endorsement within six months of hire. And then of course, passive physical CDL requirement, um, and let's see here, I apologize, passive physical, they are subject to CDL, um, federal motor carriers, random drug and alcohol testing, and our residency requirements. We so had- they just go out and drive, basically. It's a little, Okay, oh, you mean for the exam or just in general for the position? For, for the, the exam. For, right. Yes, there are two pieces of equipment that they do practice in. I apologize, I misunderstood. And it was an end loader and skid loader. And then they were- Well, this is the one for the, uh, um, out there for the recycling? No, this would actually be our street division at Public Works. So they're actually out there fixing the roadways. Okay. Mm -hmm. And potholes, yep. So six candidates were qualified and invited to the practical. One scored below 70%, leaving us with five candidates that are on the list to be certified. And our stats. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next is our application and software integration developer. Um, it's an entry level position in our IT department. And we had a 30-70 split and it is a non-bargaining position. So minimum qualifications are a bachelor's degree in computer science and three years of work experience, or we would also accept an equivalent combination of training and experience. So we did have 20 applicants, five candidates were qualified and invited to the written exam, one did not show, and three did score below 70%, mm -hmm. leaving us with one candidate that passed and invited to the interview that candidate passed the interview, background check, and is on the list to be certified. Well, with one candidate, you're kind of under pressure to see if they pass. <laughs> <laughs> so are you obliged to hire that one candidate? We are, yes. So software integration developer. Yes. In other words, their job, whole job is to see that the programs work together. Yes, they're coding. They're doing everything on the back end. There really is that much to make a full-time position? There's enough to have a two full-time positions, actually. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of coding that's involved in our programs. I just can't get over it. 15 people didn't do the minimum qualifications. I know, it's surprising. Like, I'm, I'm like, why did you apply for it in the first place? I just, right. And, you know, you'd think, well, they've got a four-year degree, they, they're experienced, et cetera, uh, and yet they don't even meet the minimum qualifications. Like, now, do these, like, go on in you know, like on the internet website, job sites and stuff? So they do. In fact, we share these a major, several different ways, depending on the position. We can actually put it on LinkedIn. We actually promote it on our Facebook page. I do know that Indeed automatically picks this up. And then we do post to Handshake, which is to our colleges, and it also goes out to alumni as well. And then we can select the different fields we would like it to go to. Like a lot of them, though, they just click, you it's know, click. Yeah, yeah, click. Click, click, so click, click, click. If you're even close, click. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. So I can see why you'd have so many that wouldn't meet qualification. I guess. I guess. Okay. Yeah. It's well, always worth a shot. Click. <laughs> you <might> waste <laughs> your click. <laughs> this one, this one writes the program that if you approach, the light turns red. Well, I know that. <laughs> I've seen that many times. That's the only thing. Okay, and then our stats. Next is our systems and security engineer, which is an entry level position again in our IT department and another 30-70 split and it's non-bargaining. So for this position, they do need to have a bachelor's degree in computer science plus five years of relative work experience or a combination of education and training um, to carry the duties as presented. 
They do need extensive application support experience with Active Directory, VMware, Microsoft Exchange, Adobe, and Microsoft Office, and then possess a valid driver's license and maintain that throughout duration of employment. Okay. So we did have 10 applicants. Seven were qualified and invited to the exam. Three did not show and two did score below 70% leaving us with two candidates that passed the written and were invited to the interview, both passed the interview, passed the background check, and are on the list to be certified. Okay, what does this job actually do? They make sure that the security of our computer system here throughout the city is safe and they protect us from any hackers. Um, so they make sure that our IT system is safe and secure. It's good that they have a driver's license, but isn't this a position that you don't drive around much? For this one, you will drive from facility to facility from time to time. The one, the developer position is one that is more behind the scenes, that they do not have to drive facility to facility. So yes, you would need a driver's license for this position. Okay. No, I mean, it's fine okay. and it's good that they can drive. Okay. Sure, yeah. Although, given the fact that this is an engineer, they probably have to self-drive the car. Well, there you go. <laughs> Here's a question. Do you need a driver's license for a self-driving car? I just put that out there. It's your <laughs> We appreciate it. Yeah. Well, here, we can talk about that. Maybe we'll make this last 20 minutes. <laughs> for our so so that's it for civil service. IT all in one place, or is it in different places in the city? It's in several different places in the city. Three different, yep, three different separate locations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is where their house Should at. They Public all be works. In one or is there, or I mean, you got three locations. Is it just because this is where they had room, or that they're? Uh, no, we, yeah. we uh, kind of diversify the location because we have um, you know, amounts of users in different locations that we hope to help them. Or is it something like, well, if the power goes out or something happens to this building, you still have IT support? Yeah, exactly. So I'm Corey Smith, the IT director. Um, uh, it's important for us to have staff available if they do have a need. So you have concentrations of users at different locations. Um, Public Works has a fair amount of staff, city staff, that need access to computers. So it's important to have IT staff on site. Uh, same with uh, the police department and city hall. So those are the three locations where we currently have staff. So. While you're up here, not, you don't have to do a long answer, but I'm a security engineer. Mm -hmm. What am I doing? How do I know if somebody's trying to attack our city of Davenport? Is there a certain... Uh, well, we, we evaluate uh, cybersecurity incidents at multiple layers. So you obviously have your regular firewalls and switches like that. We have virus protection that notifies us if there's a potential infection within the city. Um, we also um, keep track of uh, cybersecurity um, or security awareness training. So they... Uh, so that way we're educating our personnel, both in IT and outside of IT. All, any um, of our uh, city staff who have a login to our network have to do uh, security awareness training that educates them on uh, cybersecurity uh, threats that are out there. So they manage a bunch of different areas within the city because those attacks can kind of come from anywhere, really. So. Good. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's it for the list. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we've heard all the certification list. I would uh, entertain a motion to approve those. I make the motion we approve them. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Certification lists are approved for today. I move we adjourn. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> at least let me ask it. <laughs> all right, it's been moved. Or, to adjourn. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are adjourned. Okay.